Hey everybody, Flash001 USA here. My reasoning for making this video in particular is, I know there's a lot of people out there, myself included, that like to build up some of the projects that we see uploaded to YouTube. When you're working with permanent magnets, electromagnets, or your own hand-wound coils, you may not always necessarily know what the true north and south pole of your components are unless A, you happen to have in your possession a good trusted reference magnet that's marked, B, you've got a good compass, C, you're one of these people that went out and spent twenty or thirty dollars on a magnetic wand that runs on a couple of watch batteries. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a reference electromagnet that's capable of running on anything from a one and a half volt battery up to a nine volt battery or even a twelve volt DC supply if that's all you have at hand at the time. Apply this same method to coils that you're winding for your magnet motors, solenoids, or any other projects that you're using that use coils. You're going to automatically know what's the north and south pole on your coils that you made up. When you're working on projects like this, that kind of information is priceless and it'll save you a lot of time in the end. We're just about ready to get to the meat of the video. Before we do, and for everybody's sanity, we're going to cover two different styles of compasses and you'll understand why I made that statement. This first compass we're going to cover is just a standard pocket compass. The red half of the needle is magnetized magnetic north. The white half of the needle is magnetized magnetic south. If you were able to follow the text in the video while I was speaking, then you're aware that what we refer to as the North Pole on the Earth, in reality, is actually magnetic south. So in other words, you take a compass like this outside, the red needle on the compass, which is true magnetic north, is going to point toward that true magnetic south pole. We just call it the North Pole on paper. Go figure. This second compass is a slightly different animal. This is the kind of compass that you put on the dashboard of an automobile. This is also why I have a picture of the cartoon guy wearing a straitjacket in the video. Let me explain. Let's say you're driving down the road and you look at this compass and you realize that you're driving north. Why? Because through the plastic view window on the compass you see the letter N which tells you that you're going north. What you don't realize or maybe you don't take into consideration is, is behind that letter on that compass is the true south pole of the internal magnet of the compass. Why? because the true north pole that you don't see that's facing the opposite direction through the black plastic is being attracted toward the south pole of the earth which is what we call the north pole on paper. If you go to identify magnets with this type of compass do it on the exact opposite side from the actual view window on the compass or your pole identification will be bass backwards on your unknown magnets. The first thing that you need for this project is a nut, a bolt, and two washers. Use something around a quarter inch diameter, I would say for the bolt, an inch to an inch and a half in length. On the bolt, you can either use masking tape, electrical tape, or even a piece of a drinking straw cut off to the proper length to protect the magnetic wire from the steel threads on the bolt. Just be sure to leave enough thread exposed so that you can screw the nut back onto it. As far as the washers go, once it's all together, use a dab of super glue on each end, and once it dries, you'll wind up with a steel bobbin like you see in the photo here. Alright, let's get down to the mojo of this video now. First of all, let me say that I didn't want to waste your time showing you this coil being wound on YouTube. Most of you out here that do these types of projects, you probably wound enough coils that if they were unwound, we could wrap the whole galaxy in magnet wire ten times over. The concept behind this is pretty simple. We're making an electric reference magnet. You gotta use color coded wire on this thing. If you don't, it's useless. The key to this thing is twofold. First of all, the direction the wire is wound in. Second of all, that you know where the negative and positive hook up to it. Take a second and study the coil in this photo. The first thing you notice is the poles are pointing up and down or in a vertical position, top and bottom. If you notice that, then look below the coil and you're going to see a red wire. It's also running up and down on your screen. That's your positive wire and it hooks to the center conductor of the coil or the beginning of the winding of the coil which is right up next to the threads, either way you want to look at it. Look to the left, you're going to see a green wire running horizontal that hooks to the outer winding of the coil. That wire is running over the top of the coil and not underneath the coil. I'm saying that because it may not be clear in the video. Notice that arrow that's pointed to the right? That's the direction that this coil must be wound. In other words, it's wound clockwise. To make this simpler to understand, 
Let's say you wanted to unravel this coil right there where it's sitting in this photo. And you took your two fingers and put the coil between your two fingers on the table and decided to pull on that green wire. The coil would spin counterclockwise between your fingers as it was unwinding. I'm hoping that makes sense right there. Now, if you hook this coil up according to its polarities, with the red wire going to the positive side of the battery and the green wire going to the negative side of the battery, you're going to generate a north pole on the top of this coil and a south pole on the bottom of this coil. There's your reference. I wound this coil with 30 gauge wire at a thousand turns. I did that because I didn't want it to draw a lot of current. Here it is finished with the polarities written on it and the arrow that you see in the center is the actual direction that I wound the coil. Alright, I'll power this bugger up so you can see it in action. Actually, I'll power it up and down a couple times so that you can see the effect. Pay attention to which part of the compass needle actually points toward the electromagnet. On the compass, the red half of the needle is north pole and the white half of the needle is south pole. The electric magnet's north pole is actually aimed at the compass. Here's a demonstration with the reference magnet that I have. I'll do the test a couple times in the opposition mode and then the last time I'll do it in the attraction mode. For the record, one of the pluses that I got for putting a thousand turns on this coil it had made it a pretty powerful magnet because that's a neodymium magnet that I'm working with and even with that little 9 volt battery this thing is able to shove it around with ease. I'm going to end this video out with one more short clip. To me it's a pretty important clip for you to see. Remember me talking about that automotive compass and how you can be fooled by it? Well I'm going to do a demonstration of a way not to do it. What you're going to see here is I'm going to put the electric magnet in front of the compass and that's the north pole of the electromagnet facing the compass and when I turn it on I want you to read what comes up on the compass and you'll understand while earlier in this video that I had that cartoon guy wrapped up in the straight jacket. This is something that I can't stress enough. If you do use one of these types of compasses to identify your magnetic poles do it from the back of the compass. Remember this, okay? From the back, not the front or you will be bass ackwards when you mark your magnetic poles on the magnets that you're testing. Alright, I hope you guys liked the video, and I hope some of you out there found some information of use to you. If you did like it, do me a favor, leave me something up on the blog. You can shoot me an email. You can even send it to me via Carrier Pigeon. Hell, you can even send me a psychic message. I don't know if I can receive it, but I'll try. Just don't tie a message to a rock and throw it through my window. If you do, i got to come get you. Flash 001, everybody. We be gone.